Welcome back guys, it's Preets coming back to the brand new Binding of Isaac video. Today we have a little bit of an interesting episode because for some reason the audio did not record. And before we start this episode, I just want to explain some things. So you guys might know, I went on a trip to see my friends for New Year's, went to Oregon, had a really great time, I was gone for a while. The plan was that when I was gone, there are supposed to be a few episodes, this is the last of those few episodes, that were supposed to release every other day while I was gone. When I was on the plane making the thumbnails, I was looking at the first video, realized it was fine, looked at the second video, realized it was 10 minutes, I'm like, that's crazy. And the third video had no audio, so I was like, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this right now, I'm just going to wait to upload these videos till I get home, give myself a couple days to rest, and just, you know, carry on with life and be happy. So that's what I did. Sorry that these videos are coming out late, sorry I was gone for so long, but this is going to be a little bit of a voiceover over an audioless episode. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into the episode. Welcome back guys to an audioless episode special. Wah, wah, wah. So today we are doing Eden on hard mode as per usual. This run started off really well. We started with blue candle, a quality for our trinket, Play-Doh cookie dough for our passive item, 2.61 tier rate, which is below average tier rate and 4.3 damage, which is above average damage. So a pretty solid start. The first item room of our run was cone head, which is a pretty good item. It gives you a 25% chance of negating damage. Plus it gives you a soul heart. So our health was kind of secure in the beginning, kind of nice, kind of great. And then we headed to the boss. The first boss was little dark one, little man, little dark dude. I don't even know his name, but he was kind of a piece of cake. Whenever you have Play-Doh cookie dough, pretty good damage, average tier rate and good health. I mean, it's pretty hard to lose against the first boss. So he was kind of a dream to beat. Okay, so I just looked it up. His name's Little Horn. I completely forgot for some reason. The item we got from Little Horn after beating him was the one and only blue cap, which is a great item, gives you a tier rate up. So now our tier rate was above average, our damage above average, everything above average, kind of a great run at the start and we headed down to Downpour. In Downpour, we took a little bit of a risk in the item room, it took the mystery item, and it happened to be Holy Mantle, which just set our run on a crazy course, because Holy Mantle allows you to take one damage every single room of the run, and you won't lose an ounce of health if you do just that, which is crazy, you know? That's a lot of defense. After I picked up Holy Mantle in the room outside the item room, I did find Gilded Key, which is a trinket that makes it so you only get gold chests, and that's really all it does. It's not really a good trinket unless you have a dumb amount of keys. And as you can see, I don't really have a dumb amount of keys. I pick it up anyways, and I take it with me for a while. I don't know why. In the boss room, we fought Wormwood, which Wormwood's one of the easier bosses in downpour. As long as you can dodge a little bit of his jumpy attacks, you're gonna be fine. And with Blue Candle, you can do a lot of damage because he's technically a segmented boss. So he just goes through your Blue Candle like crazy, he takes a bunch of damage. We beat him with ease. And then I decided that I was going to skip the devil deal because if you look at our health, we only have one red heart of health and so not a lot to barter with. So it's better just to go for angel deals in this run, which might have paid off in the future. I'm not going to spoil that. You're going to have to keep watching. I don't really know what I'm doing. This voiceover is a little crazy, guys. I don't know. I'm having fun, though. Before I left this floor, I decided to go to the curse room because we had free access to it. We have Holy Mantle. In this room, I found Magic Skin, which Magic Skin gives us one item. In return, it gives us a Broken Heart and takes one Red Heart or two Soul Hearts. I also had Soul of Isaac, so I was able to reroll both items, get Little Science, which that's not the name of it. It's the Little Horn. I don't know. I don't know the boss's name or the item's name. I'm just a little dumb. It also got us Sack Altar, which I don't know why I didn't take Blood Puppy. If I took Blood Puppy, I could have used Sack Altar to get a free item. I don't know. But I decided to take that and take Sack Altar with me. A little note to add on top of that is if you use Magic Skin, after one use, there's I think a one in four chance that the next item is going to be replaced with Magic Skin. So it's one of those items you kind of need to take with you or else you're just going to keep seeing it. And I took Sack Altar instead and didn't use it. I don't know. Then we proceeded to go down to Downport 2, where in the item room we found Cracked Orb, an item that allows you to open up any door connected to the room you're in if you take damage, including the Mega Satan door. So I had pretty easy access to Mega Satan, which was a big win. For some reason on this floor, I make a big spectacle of taking my wash off, so you can see that right here. I don't know, I was kind of kind of kooky wacky, I guess. After the item room, I headed to the boss fight where I fought Rainmaker, which is one of my worst bosses in the game. I don't know why I take so much dang damage to Rainmaker. It's that weird attack where he just shoots uh, shoots tears out to his both sides. I stand too close to him and just get hit all the time. But luckily, I didn't take any damage here. Beat the boss. It was fantastic. From Rainmaker, I got stem cells, so I got an HP up, and I got the angel deal, which inside of it was 
Rosary. Rosary gives you three soul hearts and a tier eight up. Pretty solid item. The only downside to Rosary is it does make it so you can get the Bible in any room that you go in into the future, which can also replace planetarium items with the Bible. Kind of sucks. It's a really good item, has a downside, but I was happy with it. And then I decided to beat the angel, get the key piece, even though I already had sacred orb, who doesn't want the key pieces? You know what I mean? In the next floor's item room, we find D12, which is one of the more unfortunate items. It did recently get a buff that allows you to reroll your rocks into like better stuff or something. Still not a good item. And for some reason, I decide not to take magic again and to keep on taking Sack Ultra with me. Kind of a sick move, if you ask me. This floor overall was kind of underwhelming. We fought Gertie Jr., which pretty rough boss if you don't know how to do it pretty easy boss if you do i feel like i'm pretty good at it watch i dodge dodge what dodge wasn't that sick anyways after i beat the boss we went to the angel room and guess what we got a crazy item we found jar of wisps one of probably the worst items in the entirety of the game the way it works is every time you use it you get one more wisp so the first time you use it you get one wisps the second time you use it you get two wisps and it's a 12 charge item it's just not good at all if anybody ever takes it it just doesn't make any sense it is just a bad item after beating the boss and beating the angel i decided to go explore the floor even more and we find a library but look we have zero keys and the only thing i can think of to get a key was to go sacrifice in the sacrifice i do all 12 get some soul hearts don't get anything good don't get any money I'm not able to go to the shop, not able to go to the library on this floor. It was kind of a disaster if you ask me. And at this point, I decide it's probably best for me to drop Gilded Key because it seems like I'm never going to have keys if I keep using Gilded Key. You kind of need brown chests in this game to get keys and get resources without using keys. So yeah, Gilded Key, bad. The next floor turned out to be a lot better than the last floor. The first thing I really did was go and fight the boss, which because I was holding Sack Altar, I actually found Magic Skin because of the increased chance of finding Magic Skin after using it. So I decided to take it. At this point, it was a waste to be holding Sack Altar because I was just going to get more Magic Skin. So I took Magic Skin, went to the item room, and found Knockout Drops, which is a really good item. It's a luck-based item. Every once in a while, you shoot out a tier that's a fist that knockbacks enemies. It's not the best item ever, but it's better than what we had before. But I then decide to use Magic Skin, which gets me Toxic Shock, one of the rarer items in the game, one of the best items in my opinion. It does mass room damage based off of your damage, so it's pretty sick nasty, if you ask me. That was about it for the last floor, and so the next floor was also really good. We found Technology Zero in the item room, which allows you to have a chain lightning effect between your tiers. Slightly different than Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder shoots out a tier, then causes lightning to connect to enemies based off of where it hits. Technology Zero is a little bit different where there's only lightning between your tiers. So it's really good with quad shot, triple shot, anything that allows you to have multiple tiers going out at once. But this is where the game really, really ramps up. Because I have magic skin and I also have car battery from the shop on this floor, I was able to go into the secret room that had a reroll machine. In that room, I was able to spawn two items for the cost of four soul hearts, and I was able to get two secret room items. I was able to get death certificate one of the best items in the game because it allows you to get any item in the game in the death certificate floor i decide that i was going to take rock bottom because everybody always tells me rock bottom is the best item ever and it's pretty true some runs with rock bottom are incredibly good some of them are pretty good still better than most but still not the best ever so that's why i chose rock bottom and once we go back to the secret room I decided to re-roll a little bit more to test my luck to see if I can get any better item. Even though I already have the best secret room item pretty much in the game and I already found death certificate, I was still down to try for a little bit of a re-roll. I ended up landing on chaos and sausage because I was able to re-roll the active item I was currently holding. And I decided to take both of them because chaos makes it so I can find any item in the game in any room in the game. So it's a high risk, high reward type item. And I also decide to take Sausage because it's the only true all stats up in the game. And it's a good enough item. I have Rock Bottom. I just want increased stats. I was happy with what I had. So I moved on and went and fought the boss. After fighting Mom, I do get the Angel Deal, which I go into. And there are two items I can pick from. The Mind and Bloody Lust. Now, these are not usually Angel items. But because I do have Chaos, it made it so it was random items in here. So I decided to take Bloody Lust because with Rock Bottom, it can give me the highest possible damage I can get in the game at this point. On Womb 1, I do go and fight the boss, which gets me Magic Skin again. Because I did reroll Magic Skin 
in the secret room on the last floor. I didn't have it, so of course I was expecting to get it at some point. Then I go into the angel deal, which I somehow got again. My luck with the angel deals this round was pretty crazy, and I got my reflection. Once again, chaos just causes me not to be able to get real angel items, or it has a lower chance of getting real angel items. You know, it's a little bit give and take. After the boss, I then go and sacrifice 12 times. I get soul hearts, book of revelations, and because I have enough health, I decide to use magic skin, which gets me two items. It gets me the body and it gives me milk, which I'm actually really happy about milk because whenever you get hit, it gives you a really good fire rate up. So with rock bottom, that can be a really good item. The body gives me more red hearts, which means I can use magic skin more in the future maybe, even though I'm already at six broken hearts. It's a little bit risky, but it was actually a very, very beneficial attack room. Before I leave the floor, I go into the super secret room where there is one of the crystal ball lotto slot machine thingies. I don't know what the actual name of them, but I do decide to pay it out a little bit since I have so much money and there are no more shops on the run. And I end up getting a pretty interesting trinket. I get telescope lens, which is an item that increases your planetarium chance, but it also has a second little ability where it allows you to get planetariums on the womb floors as well. Now, usually I wouldn't really pick this up at this point in the run if I had a better trinket, but seeing that I didn't have a trinket at this point, I'm like, why not take it? And it actually ends up paying off major. The first room I find on Womb 2 is the secret room, which once again has a reroll machine, which is absolutely insane. So many times on my Eden Streak runs, if you guys watch my stuff, you will see that I have some sort of item or card that spawns more items, and I'm just looking for a secret room with a reroll machine. And it almost never happens. And on this run, we found not one, but two reroll machines in secret rooms. And in this secret room, I was able to reroll and get some crazy stuff. After a couple rerolls, I was able to get Eden's Soul, which is a pretty cool item that allows you to spawn in two items from the current item pool. The difference between this item and Magic Skin is it doesn't take health away. So I decided that I was going to go out, get 12 charges real quick and spawn two more items in the secret room that already has a reroll machine. During my adventure to get 12 charges for Eden's soul, I was able to find a planetarium, which was somehow a 51.9% chance, which I don't really know how that happened. Telescope Lens gives you a plus 24% chance at getting a planetarium, but I had a really high chance at this point, which I'm not complaining about. The only issue is I did have chaos. So once I actually went into the planetarium, all I got was mini mush, which was so disappointing, but it's the game you play when you take chaos. It was just really cool to find a planetarium after taking telescope lens, which doesn't really happen too often. After the planetarium, I was able to get all 12 charges for in soul. I went back to the secret room and was able to get three more items for my run. The first item I got was host hat, which allows you to block explosive damage. The second was cricket's head, which gives you a 1.5 times damage multiplier. And finally, the reroll machine exploded. So I got scapular, a pretty okay item. When you go down to half a heart of health, you get a soul heart, which is fine. It's really good in early runs, allows you to infinitely sacrifice, which is cool. It's awesome, but wasn't going to be too helpful on this run. The last thing I did on this floor was go to the boss arena room because I found a balls of steel pill. I was able to get myself down to below one red heart of health. And so I was able to get a free item. And because I had chaos, it was going to be some random item in the game. It happened to be Ouija board, which isn't a bad item. It gives you spectral tears. It added to my run, but it wasn't anything that was going to make me win or like really change my run astronomically. After the boss arena room, I then finished the floor, go to cathedral. Cathedral is really uneventful. I really just ran through the floor, went and fought Isaac, won against Isaac pretty easily, and went to chest. The cool thing about chest is every single chest you get will have an item in it guaranteed, which was super awesome when I fought a room with four Widowmakers and got a chest that had Epiphora. Now, Epiphora is one of those items that is practically useless in pretty much every situation except this one. Epiphora is an item that gives you a huge, huge fire rate up for shooting your tears in one direction for a prolonged period of time. The longer you shoot in that direction, the bigger the fire rate increases. And this is usually bad because as soon as you shoot in a different direction, it goes away. But with Rock Bottom, I keep that fire rate up and get crazy, crazy tier rate for the rest of the run, which is absolutely insane. With my 12 tier rate and my 20 damage, I go and fight Blue Baby, which was an absolute breeze, not even a challenge. I only had four hearts in total of health because I had eight broken hearts, but I wasn't really concerned because I also had Holy Mantle. I beat Blue Baby. I then go fight Mega Satan, and Mega Satan is just as easy because I have a crazy, crazy amount of damage and tier rate, which just makes the run a breeze. And that right there will bring an end to win number 307 
in a row i just want to apologize i'm sorry that this video is coming out a couple days late i just had no motivation to actually finish editing this video and this video had to come out before i released any other eden streaks and i wanted to make it a little bit fun by editing it and kind of making it better than the past audio list episodes where i would just speed them up really fast and upload them as a two minute video i thought this was a lot more fun and could make the most out of a sad situation of me losing the audio if you guys did enjoy this video please make sure to leave a comment like subscribe it really helps my channel helps me grow thank you guys all for watching and as always it's in preets peace out